Here we're going to look at two trig functions representing two similar things. Different amplitude, maybe it's going to be two wheels of different sizes rotating at the same speed. A point on either of those wheels, or a predator and prey model. So I'm going to start by trying to plot both of these as cosine functions instead of sine functions. So here's the sine function plotted, and on GeoGebra I'm going to put in the cosine function as well. And we're going to leave everything exactly the same, except I'll change the sine to cosine and we'll see how this affects the function. So they look identical except one's been moved along and I have to figure out how I'm going to move it back. So I'll put in a slider C to see how much we have to move it by to make it fit straight onto the sine function and be an identical function. So by default the cosine function and sine functions have the same period of 2 pi except the sine function lags behind by a quarter period or pi over 2. So a quarter period is how much I'm going to have to shift this cosine function. Now the cosine function is actually ahead so I have to shift it backwards by a quarter of the period. So that looks like the number 1 in this case, but that's because we've got the coefficient pi over 2 at the front of this bracket. So when you expand through, you'll get pi over 2 as the horizontal shift for this cosine function compared to the sine function. So just to expand that out now so you can see, it's going to be pi over 2x plus pi over 2. I'll illustrate this again with the other function. So this one originally has no horizontal shift, so it'll be easy to see the horizontal shift in action here. And we make it minus because we're trying to shift it backwards. And just like with a parabola, putting a minus inside the brackets shifts it to the right. And here we have just the two sine functions plotted. Now the next question is going to be what percentage of the time is g of x? above f of x. So the entire period of this is 4. We can see this because this coefficient of x here is the period. We multiply by 2 pi to make the period equal 1, then we divide by the period we wish to have. So 2 pi divided by 4 gives us a period of 4. And you can see that's how long it takes before the function repeats. Both of these functions have the same period. So if I just figure out how much of the time this function g of x is bigger than f of x. That will answer the question. So to begin with, I'm going to find out when these two equations are equal. So I'll plot them equal to each other. I'll just start by subtracting 3000 from both sides. Okay, now these two angles inside the signs are not equal, so I can't just subtract them from each other. So I'm going to have to do something to this angle on the left. Using the compound angle formula, I know that sine A plus B is equal to sine A cos B plus sine B cos A. For me, A is pi over 2x and B is pi. So it can be broken up like this. Right, now I'll just plot a cosine function, so you can see at pi over 2, or at pi rather, the cosine function has a value of negative 1, and the sine function has a value of 0. So if I substitute these values back in, I know that cos of pi is negative 1, sine of pi is 0. That lets me simplify this down to negative pi over 2x. So the left-hand side of this equation can be written as negative 5,000 sine pi over 2 x plus 3,000, which is equal to the right-hand side. And now both these angles are the same. So if I combine the two sine terms because they have the same angle, 
then that will leave me with this equation. And I'll rearrange this until I get to the point where I've got the angle separated. So this step here, pi over 2x equals the inverse sine of 0 0.4. Right, now we're going to want to try and find not just one solution, but the first two solutions. So we're going to have to do the general solution at this point. Remember, I do the general solution before I solve for x, but after I do the inverse sine. So it's going to be n pi plus negative 1 to the power of n times sine inverse. Now I'll divide both sides by pi over 2. Remember, dividing by pi over 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 over pi. And I'll simplify this down. And I forgot my 2 over pi on here. There's my 2 over pi there. Right, so this is my my general solution and I'll just try n equals 0 for the first value so just substitute an n equals 0 into the equation and when I evaluate that n equals 0 that gives me 0 0.26 and I'll do it again for n equals 1 and that'll give me the next solution that'll give me x equals 1.73 so that's the two points where the red and the blue cross over in the first period. And that distance there, the yellow distance between those two values, is when the blue function, or g of x, is bigger. So if I subtract the right from the left, it will give me the, the value, divide by the total period, multiply by 100, and that will give me 38.9% of the time.